Good evening and welcome. This is Sports Report. I'm Andy Michaud. That is Matthew Hatfield. And it's October and Halloween's coming. And we got some fog rolling into a couple of these games. It's perfect mood setter. And we had some good ones. We did. The tricks and treats will be here soon. And we'll start things off at Pocosin Middle School where the Islanders will try to knock off the undefeated Lafayette Rams. Lafayette coming into this one at 6-0 on the season. Pocosin with a record of 5-1. That only setback coming a few weeks ago to York. And it'll be the Lafayette special teams trying to get Andy Lynn's squad started off in a big way. Returning the kick here is Kyle Johnson. He gets some room and he has some speed racing past midfield. Is anybody going to catch him? He's finally going to get tripped up right there inside the 10 yard line, an 85 yard return. 85 yards. Started at the eight and wound up inside the 10 yard line. Still no score. That won't last for long. It is Caleb Craig and Rink, the three yard plunge with the first touchdown, and it puts Lafayette on the board first, 7-0. Lafayette leading the Bay Rivers District in rushing yards at well over 200 per game. They have multiple options and needing them with John Douglas sideline due to injury, and no need to fear, Kellen Cre Caleb Kregenbrink is here, 58 yards to pay dirt, and the Rams continue to roll up two scores in this one. That looked like it wasn't going anywhere, Then he kept on running. It's a 25-yard attempt, and no, he just missed it. It looked like one of my wedge shots that just chunked off to the right. No good, still 14, nothing. Pocosin looking to get a stop defense, but they need it badly here. Chase Pond, the quarterback, headed to Pittsburgh to play linebacker, throwing the oh. bomb, and it is hauled in by Hezekiah Grimsley. 84 yards to the house, and Lafayette's offense is clicking. But oh. another one of Andy's... Shot's not so good there. Yeah, he just bladed that one a little short again. You sure it's going to be a linebacker? That was a heck of a throw. Meanwhile, still on the ground, it's Armani Burton with a four-yard touchdown run. And then a two-point conversion. Fine, I'll take it. Sure, why not? Take it myself. Two-point conversion is good. It is now 28 nothing. Hey, why not go for two? It's a higher percentage play right now for I Coach right. Lynn's squad. And you see right here, it is Pocosin running the football. That will be Kyle Pulteney, 53 yards, and now the Islanders fans have something to cheer about. Touchdown. Oh, they're not happy. Come on, he was down on the one. No, he wasn't down. Just let him get the 53-yard run. Extra point, uh-oh. Extra point, they're not having a good time tonight. That one doesn't work, and that goes nowhere, and it's 28 to six. The other Craig and bring Joey on the stop there while the fans of Pocosin are cheering. Andy Lynn was screaming, but he's not screaming with anger anymore as Lafayette again continuing to run the football with success in this one. As you see right here, it'll be another kick and this hey. one will go through. How about that? The Rams tack on and add to their lead there. 35 to 6 as their offense is just in high gear right now, Andy. Uh, they had something going there. Kicking game finally works. We got a play action. Where's the ball? Where's the ball? Where is it? Oh, there it is. And it's Pulteney way downfield. A 66 yard run. Nobody saw him right through the defense, and it's a touchdown, 35-13. That's two scoring runs of 119 yards for Pulteney. Nobody ever does that on the Lafayette defense, and there's Robert Hennessy punching it in. The Islanders making a bit of a rally here. It's 35-19, two touchdowns, two two-point conversions. You're back in business. You tie things up. Only problem is Lafayette's got Chase Pine, and they also have Hezekiah Grimsley, 30 yards, and that will be the capper. That will do it. Final score, 41-19. Lafayette takes it. The Rams over Pocosin. Now you see Craig and Brink, good game for him. 23 carries, 194 yards, and two touchdowns on the ground. Lafayette staying undefeated as they're now averaging 46 points per game on the season. Pulteney, a great effort in defeat, 186 yards rushing and two scores for the Islanders. More scores around the area. York 13-7 over Tab as the Falcons get two touchdowns from freshman quarterback Ramsey Hyatt. The Tigers outgained the Falcons 191 to 177, but not enough as they drop their second straight game. Well, we're going to go to Ch uh, Suffolk now. Suffolk, yeah. It's a Chesapeake team going to Suffolk. The Kings Fork Bulldogs playing host to the Grassfield Grizzlies on homecoming. Problem for Kings Fork here is well, one, they got fog, and two, they're missing their star running back, Deshaun Weddington, and coach Joe Jones, both suspended after getting ejected last week. I'll tell you who's not suspended. Holloway. Grant Holloway off the little screen pass from Big B. It's easy for Big B. Let me toss it to the big guy. He's going to run 65 yards for the touchdown, 7 0 early. It's like that super agent James Bond. He goes, Holloway. Grant Holloway is my name. He walks in and people take notice. And they're also taking notice of Shawan Goodman, 38 yards for a touchdown as the Grizzlies have a two score lead less than three minutes into the contest. 
They're trying to figure out what just happened to him. Meanwhile, Klux is uh, not quite done yet. Ryan Klux finds Jamil Ely for 26 yards and then more offense for Kings Fort. It is Darren Butts, 38 yards. It looks like a zero, but it's really an eight. It is 38 yards from the touchdown run and Kings Fort on the board and we got a football game now. The sophomore filling in admirably for Deshaun Wethington and Grant Holloway. Um, nobody can stop him on this night as he slips away from one tackle, two tackles, and then he's going to sprint the rest of the way. 77 yards, another touchdown for Holloway, the top 250 recruit in the country who's considering Georgia, considering Florida. Whoever gets him is getting a player. Well, kickoff. It is a kickoff, I think, right? There's the ball. Oh, there it is. Butts finds the ball. Butts runs the ball. Nobody can see him because of the fog. Look, he's holding on to somebody just for guidance. Runs through. He's still going. A big kickoff return for Butts, and it puts him in prime field goal scoring range. And oh no, it's Cluck, and that field goal is no good. The referee saw it. I couldn't see. He never saw the ball. Yeah, vision bothered on this night by the fog, but now the fog disappears for a moment. Just long enough for Justice Bigby to find his target. That's Jalen Foskey, and that'll set up the Terrell Scott one-yard touchdown plunge as the Grizzlies extend their lead to three scores late in the second quarter, and the fog's coming back. The fog, the King's Fork's like, wait a minute, we get the ball and the fog comes back. That's all right, Butts doesn't care about the fog. He runs down the sideline. We can't tell you how long it is because we can't see the field, but it's a long run for Butts down the sidelines, and it sets up more fog. And it sets up Thomas Jones, trust us, he's in there somewhere. 18-yard run on the touchdown for him. Yeah, it's good. 28-14. Looking like that Thomas Jones that played in the NFL and for UVA on that run there as it's homecoming, the halftime parade there. And Kingsburg trying to give their fans a parade and a comeback win. But it'll be a fumble. Uh -oh. Ball is loose and scooped up by Austin Winslow. Had a big takeaway earlier this year against Maury and comes up here again. Now it'll be Darius Higgins and the running game. Stutter step move and he is going to take off inside the 10 yard line. Big move for him and watch here's another field goal. This one from Cole Gibson. This one is good. Again, we'll take the referee's word for it. I can't see a ball. 31-14 now and the Grizzlies aren't done. Here running it is Shondell Joyner, 25 yards to the house. Grassfield, maybe their crispest offensive performance to date. Kingsport trying to get something done and Cluck's going backwards there. There's a big sack from Nick Burning. And then here we're going to try it again. Little rollout. And this one is heaved downfield and caught by TJ Hart. He is inside the 20 to the 15 yard line. Uh, good to see Kingsport playing with them hard, even though they're down by 24 points. And this time that grass field defense with Patrick Jones and company not having any of it as they come up holding the Bulldogs to just two scores in this one. They'll take a knee and run out the clock for a 38 to 14 win as Grassfield now moves their record to six and one on the season. They were four and six a year ago. Kings Fork falling to five until you see Grant Holloway with five receptions for 148 yards and two scores to lead the way for the Grizzlies. That guy's just a man amongst boys. Hickory and Lakeland in the southeastern district, 25 to 22 victory for Hickory in overtime. The Hawks getting it done, snapping that five game losing streak. Well, when we return, Andy, we'll go out and check on William Byrd taking on Northside, a big Roanoke matchup. Don't go anywhere. You're watching the Cox Sports Report. Back here on Sports Report, he's Andy Michal, I am Matthew Hatfield. Well, Andy, it's the Northside Vikings at 5-2, taking on the William Byrd Terriers, 4-2. William Byrd trying to snap the six-game winning streak of Northside to Jim Hickam Field. We go, and the best thing about this matchup, it's a fogless Friday night at Jim Hickam Field. Way out west to get away from the fog, but we did. We got away from it. And here's the first kickoff. This is Jojo Wampler taking the kickoff. He's trying to get away from the William Bird tacklers, and the Bird gets him down pretty quickly. Uh, not bad defensive setup there at the 24 yard line for William Bird trying to corral this north side running game, which will go to Jordan Palmieri for a nine yard gain. Trying to move the chains. It's Hardister now, quarterback rolling to his right, getting chased, and he will complete the pass here as they get closer to midfield. That is Carlos Boogie Basham, the six foot five, 245 pound senior, a next level recruit. And that's a big recruit. And here's Hardister with a big play to Trey Jackson. 50 yards downfield, it's a touchdown. North side, the Vikings take the lead, 7 0. North side trying to make it seven straight in this head to head series. How will William Burke? counter they need the defense to come up here it's a jet sweep for 
North side here and you see the look at the daylight there for Jojo Wampler as he gets inside the 35 yard line and some nifty running by these north side backs and wings. And some more nifty running through the middle with a 15 yard pickup for Corey Williams down to the 10 yard line. Couldn't punch it in though so they had to kick it. That's all right. Hunter Ashville says no problem. I got you. 20 yard field goal is good and it's a 10 to nothing lead. And much needed kick there to make it a two possession game. William Burr now looking to go to the air with Will Colchierto finding his man junior tight end Sean Williams for the completion. And now they're getting closer to midfield. Best drive of the night for the Terriers as they get to the 30 here. And Colchierto will call his own number. Not once here as he gets inside the 25 here. Not twice. Colchierto is going to do it again. Play fake here for another run inside the red zone. But how about a third time for Colchierto? Why not? It's a Colchierto Concerto. The symphony as he spins into the end zone. Six yards for the touchdown to cap off the 10 play, 70 yard drive. And this one's getting tight. It is now 10 to 7. Vikings still holding on. Oh, a nail biter in the fourth quarter. Does it get any better here? It's going to be a reverse pass for William Burr. Reese Watson to Brent Coleman. He got it close to the 50 yard line. Hold on a minute. I see some pink laundry on the field, though. Oh, pass interference on the offense, and it's coming back. And for those wondering, pink laundry, pink flags for October Breast Cancer Awareness Month, instead of the yellow flags, it'll be a completion now for William Bird trying to do it as they're backed up a bit. That north side defense, though, not giving him much room to budge there, and that will make it a 10-7 to game. Here we go, another oh, try. Do it they're doing it again. Will this work, Andy? Yeah, well, well, not quite as deep, but it still worked. That's Larry Basham. We handed it off to him. He'll take the pass, and this time they pick up Couple of yards, get a first down, I think, but it's not a huge game, but no flags on that one. That was Larry Basham getting shoved by Carlos Boogie Basham, his cousin, the Wake Forest commit there. Basham on Basham. Now it'll be Colchierto avoiding the rush, throwing a deep pass down the field and unable to be oh. hauled in there by Tevin Reynolds. The Hail Mary doesn't work and Northside will survive 10 to seven. Trey Jackson with a touchdown catch. Corey Williams with 82 yards on the ground. And look at LJ Basham getting shut down. Averaging 201 yards per game coming in, held to just 31 yards on 15 attempts. He said his cousin, the defensive end, said that we just cut down his cutback lanes. Moving on, River Ridge District, Pulaski County, who beat us at Indian River in the state run. 41-32 over Blacksburg. You're not forgiving him for that, are you? It's the no, Cougars I'm rally. 21-7 down in that game. Hunter Thomas with three touchdown runs, also a touchdown catch for Pulaski County in that win. Three Rivers District, it was Giles. The Spartans improving to 6-1 and one as Brian Mann runs for four touchdowns, almost 300 yards. They defeat Radford 35-27. to 27. Marcus Finley with over 250 yards of offense. Good effort there for the Bobcats, but unable to beat the Giles Spartans. Patriot District, West Potomac 54-30 winners over Annandale. And Cleveland and Ellis combining for seven touchdowns as they beat the Annandale Adams. Annandale getting two touchdown passes and 131 yards rushing, as well as a score from Tucker Mack in defeat. Conference 14, Potomac Falls 17 to nothing over Blair Woods from the shutout. Cash Jackson, he was money, 72 yards rushing and a touchdown as Briar Woods getting blanked there, 103 yards in defeat for Bradley Block as Potomac Falls making some noise up north. You don't get credit for that, Cash Jackson, too easy. Stonebridge 27-13 over Broad Run in Conference 14. Josh Brees and Chase Ridley, what a duo they are, combining for over 300 yards rushing and three scores. The Spartans with their first loss of the season Meach Hembry held to 58 yards rushing on 14 attempts in the loss. All right, hang with us when we come back. We're going to come back to Hampton Roads, the Tidewater area, which means more fog. And the hounds of Baskerville are coming out on the moors, but some good games coming up. Stay right with us. Welcome back to the Sports Report. Andy Michelle, Matt Hatfield with you. We come back to the coast side where the fog is thick and the points are plenty as we go to Western Branch at Oscar Smith. The Tigers coming in with that 78 game Southeastern District winning streak. Undefeated on the air, coming off that thriller against Indian River. Western Branch 3-3, three three, but they've lost two games by a touchdown or less. 14 turnovers on the year for them. Fumbles have cost them in some close games. And early on, Oscar Smith and that offense will be precise as Sean Mitchell completes his first eight passes, including this one to Larry Chappell, who reverses his field and gets a gain of 17 yards. 
Oh, no, it doesn't work on the right. We come over here to the left. Look at that. Nobody's on the left. Look at this. There's nobody in the middle for Courtney Johnson until he gets to the end zone. That is a five yard touchdown. One of the Tigers strike quick, but just we say quick, it's quick coming back the other way. That is Keith Bryant on a three yard touchdown run. And it's a tie game. Western Branch comes right back. Here's the PAT, and it is. I already floored it for you, sorry. Good. That was a 19 play drive that took almost 10 minutes off the clock for Greg Gibson's Bruins. Getting the job done. Ground and pound, if you will. Now it'll be Sean Mitchell trying to connect with his wide receiver target, Larry Chapel, again, and he does so. 19 yards for the touchdown. Tigers back up by two scores in the fall. It's looking like that 1988 New Year's Eve game. Bears, Eagles in the playoffs, Andy. Somewhere there's a running back in there. Oh, there he is. His name is Bryant, and he's in the end zone. That's his second touchdown. Four yards on this one. It's 14 off. A 10 play drive there for the Bruins. Oscar Smith, though, with the quick strikes. They're not as long and time consuming, but they get it done fast. And that'll be an incomplete pass, though. And we go to halftime, deadlocked at 14. It's a good one on homecoming at Beard DeLong Easley Field. Fog lets up a little bit. Mitchell able to see this time. Fires, and he finds Chapel again. He gets, ooh, he gets popped right there. But it's a 20-yard gain, and the Tigers' offense is rolling again. Great talent on the field. You have a field general in Mitchell, a sure-handed target in Chapel, and two hard-hitting next-level prospects in Armand Jones, the linebacker number 21, and Nate Lewis, the defensive back number 26. Plenty of good players we'll see at the next level playing on Saturdays in the future. All right, back to the ground for the Smith Tigers. Well, wait a minute. No, it's not on the ground. It's a rollout, and it's a pass, and oh, it's incomplete. Oh, they tried to go for it. Maybe they should have kept it on the ground. It's incomplete. Mitchell's rolled out. Lewis getting a hand on that. Now Western Brands with a chance to go in front. It'll be Keith Bryant. Look at him running with authority and power here as that Western Branch running game was tough all night for Oscar Smith to stop as they piled up 263 yards on 54 attempts. Fourth quarter time and a chance for the Bruins to go in front. And now we're back on the ground and it is going to be Bird with a five yard touchdown run. They had some success on the ground all night, did they? And it's now 21-17. If you haven't heard, Bird is the word. Brandon putting Western Branch in the lead, a chance to pull the stunner. But Sean Mitchell and Oscar Smith have other ideas. This time it'll be Mitchell pass incomplete again as Lewis is on the coverage. Fourth and four. Oscar Smith, not this time. Brian gets stuffed on fourth down. They still got another shot though. Time in this, have a little word with the coach. Mitchell comes back out. Ready to go to work, play fake one, play fake two, pump fake, fires downfield, and it's caught Josh Gray, a 17-yarder. Gray fades into the gray fog, and it's a touchdown, and it's now Oscar Smith, 21 to 23, and here's the replay. They go away from Lewis this time, and Gray hauling it in. Now they need an extra point to go three, but uh-oh, this isn't going to work out. Armand Jones bringing down the holder there on the... Bad snap, 23-21, Western Branch still has time to pull it off. And Keith Bryant, again, another long run, ripping it off, 22 yards for him. And the Bruins in field goal range, chance to beat Oscar Smith and end the streak. Here's the drama, the fog adds drama. It's fourth and two, and they're not going to kick it. They're going to go for it, up the middle, and no, it's Keyshawn Artis. The linebacker with the stuff on burn, and Oscar Smith is going to take it. The sophomore who had a broken leg in the opener against Nance. Remember, a month later, he is back on the field. 11 tackles to lead that defense for Coach Rich Morgan as the Tigers stay unbeaten. 23-21, to defeating the Bruins, Keith Bryant and Brandon Bird. What an effort for those two young men as they combine for over 200 yards rushing and three touchdowns, but not enough as the Bruins drop a game below 500 to 3-4. and four. In the Beach District. First Colonial over Cox, 31 to 27. Quite an upset as freshman corner Eric Britt has a pick six before the half and the Patriots bounce back from that loss to Bayside and beat the Falcons who commit a season high five turnovers. Three touchdown passes though from Cole Johnson, the GMU commit in the loss. We stay in the Beach District, Salem with a nail biter, 34 to 30 over Kellum. Kudos to coach Robert Jackson, win number 100 for them. At Salem, Malik Butts with three touchdown runs, while Cody Elmer runs for three touchdowns and 222 yards for Chris DeWitt's Knights. Green run, nine to six, and a baseball score over Prince's end. How about the effort of these two running backs? Breland Cyphers with 283 of his team's 329 yards, while DJ Walton, the player of the week a week ago, with 149 yards rushing and two interceptions as the Cavaliers drop a nail biter. Lots of yards, no points in that one. Oh, a ton of yards. Well, we'll now move over to the Peninsula District. It's part of the Great American Rivalry Series. People have grown up with this rivalry, Andy. Hampton, Phoebus, either on one side or the other. Just a 
big time showdown with these two schools, the Crabbers coming in undefeated, the Phantoms unbeaten. Check it out now at Darling Stadium on a Saturday afternoon. Who's going to secure that number one seed potentially for the playoffs? This one means a lot. Yeah, it's not a rivalry unless you have a big, giant, inflatable football, which they do, fortunately. All right. In the red is Hampton, and that's defense up the middle from the white-clad Phoebus Phantoms. Not much going on there. This is going to be a hard-fought game already early going. However, it is Quillen over the middle of Daz Newsom. And Newsom, look at the speed from Daz Newsom. 60 yards, he runs away from everybody for the first score of the game. Touchdown, Hampton on top, 7-0. What a dazzling playmaker Daz Newsom is. He had seven touchdowns in a game earlier this year against Gloucester to win Player of the Week. And you see why he is Javon Quillen's favorite target. And Phoebus with that running game, Jamari Becknell leading the Peninsula District in rushing, but not getting much room early as Linwood Johnson, Wanya Majet stopping him there. And then Anton Brown, the linebacker, bringing him down for a loss. Becknell not really getting off to a quick start there. Good defense by Hampton. They can play defense too. Can they keep it up though? Here's Justin Wright. Uh oh, pressure coming. Gets out of it, gets out of another one, somehow stays alive and avoids a couple of sacks. Didn't get much, but he avoided the sack. The defensive struggle early 7-0. Hampton with the number one scoring offense in the PD. Phoebus oh. with the number one scoring D. And Javon Quillen slips away from one sack. Gets away from a second. And then a third. Andre Smith had him twice. Couldn't bring him down as Quillen is slippery. That elusive fella going to Virginia Tech, turning a 10-plus yard loss into about a five-yard game. That's about four or five sacks that he got away from there. Now he's just going to throw it. Enough running around. He's going to find Newsom again, and Newsom just turns the Jets on down the sidelines. Finally gets popped, but he picked up 30 yards before doing it. And go to Newsom once, do it again. His third reception of the half as this one gets him down to the 10 yard line, and he has been the favorite target all year long. Here's a field goal, or is it? Maybe it's a fake. Doesn't matter. Newsom's going to get brought down by Andre Smith, who sniffs it out. Phantom's getting a much needed stop there. Defense for the Phantoms. Now some offense for the Phantoms. It's right in, uh oh, that's not the right color jersey. It is Brown with the interception. He got a sack earlier. Now he's got a pick to the 20 yard line and Hampton's in business. What can Brown do for you? Here come the Crabbers. Chance to extend that lead. They will do so. Quillen to Traquan Smith. Six yard touchdown pass. And Hampton is cruising against their arch rival. It is 13 to nothing. Second quarter. Chance to get more here as Quillen takes the snap. Will buy some time and throw it deep. Pass for a touchdown, maybe. Oh, Newsom can't bring it in there. Good coverage, better coverage by the Phantoms. A little bit better that time. Look, oh, here's the defense. Can't tackle him, can't tackle him again. Can't tackle him again. Quillen into the end zone for a nine yard touchdown run. And it's 19 nothing. Hampton with a shutout going. And they have it going on, 19 nothing. Best defensive effort for Hampton since that 2005 region championship win over Phoebus, but the Phantoms going to play with pride the rest of the way. Jamari Becknell with a big gain there. They want to get a score here, even though they know they can't win the game to avoid the shutout here. Here's the quick pass to Barry Hargrave as the quick screen gets them near midfield. Not quite done yet. His right drops back to throw. Fires over the middle. That is caught by Andre Jackson. Breaks a couple of tackles. They're tackling him with no helmet on. 16-yard pickup. The drive continues. Finally, Wright will sneak it in himself. And is he in? He's in? Yeah, he's in. It's a touchdown. Too little too late, though, for the Phantoms. 19-7, final score. Hampton takes it. Newsom named the player of the game in the Great American Rivalry Series. He was had won 10 of the previous 11 meetings. Javon Quilling accounting for 156 yards and three touchdowns. Jamar Becknell had the 55 yards on the ground, while Andre Smith led the defensive effort with 11 tackles for Phoebus in their first loss of the year. Woodside over Demi, 14-9 in the Peninsula District. Tyre Tyler with two touchdown passes to power the Wolverines past their Newport News rival. And we stay, oh, we go on, here's our player of the week, we ran out of districts. It is Dante Lampley from Bayside, the quarterback, 354 yards, four touchdowns, and he didn't use his arm too much to do that, did he? No, the South Carolina State commit, impressively, and he did it on seven completions as Bayside's now 6-1, setting up a huge showdown on Saturday against Ocean Lakes. And we're out of time. For Andy Michal, I'm Matt Hatfield. We'll catch you next time right here on the Cox Sports Report.